Hey guys, thanks for watching our Making a Homestead mini series. You're watching part two of the goat barn where we finish framing out the inside of the barn for the goats. We get their fencing done outside as well as introduce the goats to their new home. Right here, right now on In Tandem. Now that the barn has been built, it's time for Joe and Brett to begin framing up the inside. They start with the medroom and hayloft, and then move on to the fencing and the feed troughs. After finishing with the medroom and the hayloft, it's time for Joe and Brett to turn their attention to assembling the fencing and the feed trough. So after Joe and Brett got the manger and everything finished out, Wayne and I went to our, our local farm and picked up our goats. We were able to get 11 does and 15 kids. Quite a process. I've never had to wrangle goats before, but they're shifty little devils. So it was, it was quite fun to, to try and wrangle them all into the trailer, 
and then once they were in the trailer, then getting them out of the trailer into their new home. Now that they're all here, they're all settled in and everybody's doing fantastic. We're getting there. We're really getting there. <laughs> so, we, uh, hey y'all, we got the uh, goats in the goat barn now. And they've been kind of giving us a trial run of our facilities. Um, everything's turned out pretty well thus far. Um, other than they, uh, they kicked the edge of the tin on the outside of our building. So we ended up putting some plywood in to uh, keep them from damaging the tin. That was a lesson learned. Um, we're here with Farmer Wayne. We're just kind of um, going over the overall health of the goat herd and trying to keep these babies and mamas doing as good as possible. What do you think, Wayne? Well, I think that we've got a pretty good start here. We've got uh, a small group for a learning advantage for us. Um, just a little background on these goats. They are a three-way cross between boar, uh, which is the very typical of the color markings of the one you see. Uh, the second breed is called Spanish, and they are multicolored and the third breed being Savannah, which are white. So these are a combination of the three breeds and because of that crossbreeding factor, you see the little kids have many colors. And that was what we had hoped to get for the uh, clients here. And uh, they are very happy uh, to have the distinguishing color markings of, of the babies. Um, most of these babies are about a month old. Uh, some a little bit older. Our youngest are about 10 days, and they are uh, all doing quite well. We are uh, preparing to set up some uh, what we call creep facilities where the babies will uh, go in and, and have access to the feed themselves without the mothers. Um, we will be turning them out soon to the pastures. And, uh, Overall, it's just been a good start. Yeah. And we're uh, looking forward to a, uh, an educating and fun experience in uh, goat management. Oh, hello. The goat tunnel. So here we have the goat tunnel. Um, this will actually be fences that come up and carry you over this with your UTV. And the goats can go underneath and access both pastures. So it's four feet in height and we're just building up sand to elevation. We'll put some topsoil on top of that and then a little bit more of like finished soil to seed it down so it looks like the rest of it and then rock walls on the sides. It'll look completely different when we're done. <laughs>
top of the goat tunnel uh, there's a culvert a four foot in diameter culvert by I think it's 25 feet long and directly below my feet there's fencing on either side of me and and this just divides the two pastures from one another so the goats can't necessarily get into this area and out into the the rest of the yard so kind of neat um, looks like the our customer has already taken advantage of this and, and driven down here you can kind of see the tracks in the in the dirt so this whole project was uh, new to me as far as design and build is concerned. Uh, so it was, it was quite a process to get it all put together. Essentially what we have is a, a loft above us and that's for hay storage, um, straw storage, see? I'm not a farmer, so this is all new to me. I'm, I'm learning this as I go. So straw storage up above, straw is used for bedding. Uh, hay is obviously for eating, so. Uh, what we have here is basically two sides of the feeding troughs, so we're able to come in here nice and easy and throw the, the hay up against the trough for the animals. We have the manger split into two sections, so we can kind of divide them out as, as needed. You can see over here we have, we have this mama separated off with her two kids. Reason being was they're the youngest two, and when they first showed up, uh, they weren't getting the attention that they needed. So we separated them immediately to, to kind of give her time to focus on her kids. So the loft up above us here has a removable railing right here. Um, this allows us to bring in the cat and fork the straw up top, nice and easy. Uh, and then obviously a ship's ladder to get up to it. The design here was, was made so that we could just toss the straw right over the edge of the loft and into the manger. So as far as cleanup is concerned, we can come in from the, the doors on the outside of the building to scoop everything out and then replenish the straw with uh, the stuff above. This space here behind me is additional storage for hay. So similar to the straw up top, we'll have hay sitting down here and then it'll be really easy to fill the troughs when feeding. This room behind me is not quite completed, but this will eventually be a storage slash med room. So we'll just do, you know, different grains and whatnot for, for feed as well as antibiotics and, and all that kind of stuff for maintaining the health of the goats going forward. So this also gives us access to the outside pasture area or the dry lot right out here. So if the doors are closed, we can access through a service door over here. Let's go take a look. So this small pen out here is a, is a dry lot. Um, this allows the goats to still have outside pasture area, but it gives us a smaller contained area for us to kind of bring them in um, if we ever had to take them in for vet you know, visits or, or in the fall and spring. When the goats are ready to be sold, they'll eventually get herded into this area here to be sorted through and dealt with accordingly. So in addition to the dry lot, we have two pastures out back here. So you see this one here that meets up with the road and as it swings around we have a division between the two pastures uh, with a goat tunnel for the goats to access both sides so we can actually go down here and take a look at the, the tunnel and the division between the two pastures so this is kind of the operation yard we've got a nice drive that kind of goes around so trucks can get in and out real easily and then this division between the pastures allows our customer to have access to the bottom of the hill with their UTVs. So there's trails all throughout the property and this is just kind of a fun way of including the trails in the middle of the pastures. All of our fencing, we had a company, a local company, uh, K&J Fencing, uh, come out to do all of the fencing for us. They did a stellar job, highly recommended. They did all of our pasture fencing as well as the fencing around our garden. So props. So this was a bit of a challenge in itself. There's quite a bit of slope here to the land, so we had to build this up quite a bit to allow the fence to not make too many sudden uh, changes in elevation. So this got built up. Obviously the culvert was, was placed here prior. Uh, and then there's a lot of rocks all over on, on this property. So we were able to utilize a lot of the rocks from the property to build up these retaining walls on either side. 
um, to hold back the material that goes over top of the culvert. Thanks again for watching our Making a Homestead mini-series. We sure hope that you've been inspired and have learned a thing or two. I know I have in the process. We got a lot more coming your way, so be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. This here is Nibbles. She's about one of the sweetest of the kids. She's a good girl. Oh, just dropped her on her face. <laughs>